SEBI has given enough opportunity to the companies. Uh, three years are going to be over now. For last one year, SEBI has been able to leave lot of messages, very clear cut messages to the corporate world in India. Not only that, we engaged them in discussion and they came out with several suggestions. For example, the avenues through which you could reduce your own holding and increase the public share holding were limited. We have been proactive in improving yes. that. So we brought in OFS for example, we brought in uh, rights issue, we brought in bonus issue, a lot of things we have done, IPP. Now even after giving these facilities, if a corporate has decided not to follow a rule in this country, then obviously the inference is that it is prepared to face the consequences. I am very happy to tell you that last year before I embarked upon this campaign to force companies to have minimum public shareholding, I talked to the government and I got assurance from the government that they will be fulfilling the criteria well in time. Last month, I have received another confirmation from the government that for all the PSUs, they will be following the guidelines well in time. I have got that assurance. Consequences can be any violation of the listing agreement, any violation of the ICDR regulation and violation of the SEBI Act can have a huge number of implications. Starting from say uh, action against the company, against the promoters, monetary, non-monetary, cease and desist, lot of things can happen. But in order to give you a clear cut picture, I would like to add that SEBI will be following two approaches or two main parameters will be in our mind. Number one, we will be conscious of the fact that the small minority shareholder of those companies does not suffer because it is not his fault. The fault is of somebody else in the management or in the promoters in the company. So the first thought we have is how to ensure that the minority shareholder does not suffer. The second is we will give due weightage and consideration for the efforts made by that company. If there are two companies, both were at 5% public shareholding in the beginning and one company has come to 20% and another company has remained at 5%, yes. I think justice demands that the first one should be given a different treatment. So these will be the two parameters on which we will be deciding our action. I am not in a position to tell or, or speculate what is the thinking in the government. Government, I, I have made, SEBI has made a, a representation to the government highlighting that how multiplicity of regulators and lack of accountability amongst various agencies, not only of the central government but even of the state government. For example, in our CIS section of SEBI Act 11AA, there are exemptions like cooperatives, like nidhis, like uh, chit funds. These three are regulated by the state governments. Then uh, companies raising deposits that is regulated by Ministry of Corporate Affairs. NBFCs are under RBI. So within the CIS section of the SEBI Act, there are several exceptions. That exception creates a situation where you do not know which agency is looking at what. And when we embark upon a CIS inquiry, we meet with lot of resistance that look I am not a CIS, I am, I am a chit funds, I am, I, I, am, I am a cooperative. So that makes things very difficult. So you are right that going forward it would be a good attempt or beginning point that above a certain threshold one, one agency is given the entire responsibility. Uh, I, I have no information what is the government's thinking on that but I hope that the government as well as the parliament come to a finding on this. Three important suggestions which are mentioned there. One is that we do not have power to recover our penalties, our dues. We pass an order, the, the offender has, has a choice not to honor it. Our system of making recovery is very onerous. Cases are pending for last five years or so. I think we have about 150 crores worth of penalties which we have imposed where people have refused to pay. That cannot go on. We can't be an effective regulator if that goes on. So we have asked for powers like 
other regulators today, Competition Commission for example, we have asked that give us powers to uh, recover our dues. The second question, area where we have asked for support is in the area where we want uh, uh, our right to recover, uh, uh, to, to demand documents, to produce documents, to, to enter into a premises, search and seizures, uh, um, freezing of bank accounts. Obviously, we won't be doing it in all types of cases, but there are certain situations where we need that power. So that is the second. And third is we have asked for um, call data records, power to, to, to get access to call data records. If we have a case of insider trading, for example, or a serious case of market manipulation, for example, we have asked for those powers. So these are some of the suggestions which we have raised to the government. The first challenge for SEBI today is about how to cope with the technological advances in the trading system and take measures to support the growth of the market at the same time avoid risk. So what should be our mechanism of risk management taking into account the need for uh, uh, existence of the technological advancement and technological advances are happening very fast. The second area of challenge and task for us is corporate governance and third is the area of how to attract more and more retail investors in the market to, to, to gain their trust. These are the three main challenges.